Hi there and welcome to today's book review where I'll be talking about She Started It by Sean Gilbert. If you're thinking about checking out She Started It yourself, you don't have to worry about spoilers in the first half of this video. The first half of my videos are always spoiler free, so you can check out the book and see if you want to read it. After a quick summary and a basic review, I will give a clear spoiler warning before a more complete summary and then a deep dive into my praise and criticism for the book. Here are some content warnings for She Started It by Sean Gilbert. She Started It is the story of four friends who accept an all-expenses-paid trip to the Bahamas with the promise of being bridesmaids to a girl that they used to bully in high school. Most of them decide to go because they want to take advantage of the free luxury trip, but some of them do carry some guilt with them about what happened when they were young. What they hope is going to be a fun but maybe a little bit awkward getaway turns out to be something a lot bigger. Okay, so real quick, let's go over my rating system. One star means that I could not finish the book. Two stars means I finished it, but I struggled to. Three stars means I liked the book and I thought it was worth reading. Four star means I really liked the book and I would recommend it to a friend or someone I know. And five stars is an amazing book that I would definitely recommend to a friend and read again. I gave She Started It a three star rating because while I enjoyed it, I probably wouldn't recommend it to a friend or read it again. If you're into thrillers or you like books with a woman as the lead character, you may enjoy She Started It. If you read She Started It and you liked it, you might like other books books like The Villa by Rachel Hawkins, All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham, or The Guest List by Lucy Fuller. We are now entering the spoiler part of this video. If she started it, sounds like your cup of tea. You can click away, go read it, and then come back so you can engage with my deep dive. If you like the sound of this book but you don't want to read it yourself, you don't have to worry because I'll give you the full rundown. She Started It begins with Annabelle's narrative. Annabelle is the leader of a group of girls who bullied a girl named Poppy relentlessly when they were in elementary school and high school. Throughout the book, the narration alternates between each of these four girls' perspectives and excerpts from Poppy's diary when she was in elementary and high school. There are four friends we hear about during this book, including Annabelle, Chloe, Tanya, and Esther. Annabelle is in a loveless marriage and copes with this by stealing expensive items. Chloe is a famous Instagram influencer and is just about to hit the one million mark. She's self-centered and somewhat impulsive, and she wants to take the trip so that she can take photos and use it to enhance her Brand. Esther is a workaholic investment banker who cares more about her job than anything else. And Tanya is the final friend in the group. As a kid, she wanted to be an actress, but when those plans fell through, she grew up and became an event planner. Because she spent so much time around parties, she easily fell into a cocaine addiction, which she also uses to cope with her guilt over bullying Poppy. Tanya was Poppy's friend before defecting to the group of bullies. Obviously, this group of friends and Poppy were not friends in high school at all, so it's very surprising when they receive these invitations in the mail to be bridesmaids for her wedding and also come to her bachelorette party. Wanting the trip and deciding that they can push through the awkwardness, they accept. When they arrive on the island, Poppy greets them and tells them that she just wants to leave everything in the past. They're all shocked at how different she looks as she's lost weight and become prettier. She says that the four of them shaped the trajectory of her life, and that's why she wanted to have a special bachelorette party just with them. Poppy asks for all their cell phones, claiming that she wants it to be a technology-free weekend. She continuously brings up details from bullying instances of the past, like when they spilled stuff on her to make it look like she had peed herself, and when they tricked her into thinking that a boy wanted to ask her out. The women all talk about this and decide that she's just trying to make them uncomfortable and they decide that they're just gonna power through. This discomfort worsens when Poppy sends them on a scavenger hunt throughout the island and each item they find is a reminder of different ways that they had bullied her. Some of them feel bad while others are angry that she's still holding on to something trivial that happened when they were kids. All five of them play truth or dare together and during the game Poppy asks pointed questions that reveal the secrets they've all been keeping from one another. Esther is dared to go skinny dipping and and Annabelle dares Poppy to shave off her eyebrows. Poppy outsmarts Annabelle's dare by only shaving off parts of her eyebrows, leaving them looking better than they did before. Later, when the tension has risen considerably, Poppy brings out the box of cell phones and reveals that she has been using them to wreak havoc. For example, she used Annabelle's phone to post about her husband cheating on her with tons of photos of all the different women he's been with, including Chloe. First night they're there, Chloe says something homophobic and Poppy gets it on video, so 
she posts this video to Chloe's Instagram, causing her to lose hundreds of thousands of followers. Poppy uses a video of Esther skinny dipping to make inappropriate sexual proposals to her colleagues at work through her work email, which ruins her reputation and also gets her fired. She also makes it public that Tanya has been struggling with her drug addiction, making it practically impossible for her to ever get a gig as an event planner again. After revealing all of this, <laughs> some of the women threaten Poppy, but she responds by going for a walk. When they're left to their own devices, the women sit together and talk about how much they hate Poppy and they wish she was dead. The next morning, each of them wake up with a different item from the scavenger hunt, and when they go to the main building to look for Poppy in her bedroom, all they find is a ton of blood and drag marks that look like a body had been dragged from the room. Upon seeing this and knowing that there's nobody else on the island, the four women immediately begin suspecting one another of murder. Chloe goes snooping through the rooms and finds a bloody knife underneath Tanya's bed, so they all accuse Tanya of the murder and lock her in her room. Then they find her dead with the knife buried in her chest. The three remaining women become more hysterical as a thunderstorm descends upon the island. They decide to lock themselves in the house to stay safe, but Chloe becomes angry and stalks out into the storm to try and get the power back on. Annabelle and Esther look for her, but when they can't find her, they go back to their individual huts and go to sleep. Chloe's body is found on the beach the next morning, and it's clear that someone has hit her over the head with a rock. Esther and Annabelle begin fighting, each believing that the other one is the murderer. At the end of the fight, Annabelle wins, stabbing Esther multiple times and killing her. As soon as the fight is finished, Annabelle hears clapping and sees Poppy waiting for her on the beach. Poppy then informs Annabelle that everything was a setup, that she killed Tanya and Chloe, and that the whole weekend was designed to pick them off one by one, leaving Annabelle behind to take the fall for the murders. Annabelle Annabelle asks her why she's doing this when everything that happened between them when they were kids wasn't that big of a deal. Through Poppy's diary and Annabelle's retelling, we learned that Poppy got into a nice art school when she was in high school and all she needed to do was get an A on her final art exam to cement her admission. After completing the painting for her art exam, the four girls snuck into the art room defacing it with pieces of animals, dog poop, among other things. The art teacher thinks that this is Poppy trying to be experimental and going against her wishes to just follow the format for the art exam, so she doesn't believe her when she claims that it wasn't her. This takes her out of the running for the spot at the nice art college and sends her into a depressive spiral. Annabelle argues that even though all of this is true, Poppy turned out okay in the end, being rich enough to invite them to the Bahamas, getting married, and having a successful career as a doctor. So she doesn't understand why Poppy is going to all this trouble. This is when Poppy reveals that she's not Poppy at all, she's actually Wendy, Poppy's younger sister. Wendy reveals that these four women bullying Poppy in high school ultimately led her to take her own life. So Wendy created this scheme to punish them for what they had done, and she escapes on a boat just as others are coming to the island, find Annabelle there with all of the dead bodies. The book ends with Wendy planning to find the boy who let the girls into the art room to deface the painting, and it seems like she's gotten away with it. Okay, so now that we've done the summary, I'd like to go ahead and get right into what I thought about this book. My first bit of praise is I thought the first line of the book was so good. I, I really thought that it would draw any reader in and and get them hooked immediately. And it reads, there's only the bride waiting for me and she's covered in blood. The other praise that I have for this book is that I felt like for the most part, particularly in the middle, there was pretty good pacing. I thought that in the beginning it was a little bit slow and towards the end there were points where it dropped off a little bit. But for the most part, through the bulk of the middle of the book, I felt that it kept up a really good pace and really kept you hooked. I also really appreciated the scene at the end of the book where Esther and Annabelle finally turn on one another and actually start attacking each other. I loved the tension that built up to this moment and I truly didn't know how it was going to play out. While the pacing and the setting I thought were great, one place that I felt this book felt a little bit short was characterization. There were times when I was reading where I would have to tap back to the beginning of the chapter to remind myself who the narrator was because each of the characters didn't have a very distinct personal voice. Although we did learn a lot about their backgrounds and their secrets, I felt there was something deeper about each character that we never got to uncover. Another thing that made me pause while reading this were just some details that made it hard to suspend your disbelief. For example, I felt that the events leading up to them accepting the invitation didn't feel quite realistic, um, especially knowing the gravity of them defacing the painting and getting Poppy 
essentially kicked out of art school. I felt that it might have been a little more realistic if there were some other interactions up to that point, maybe if they had spoken to Poppy a little bit before accepting the invitations, because otherwise it feels kind of weird. I don't know, would you accept an invitation from someone that you had bullied relentlessly in high school and gotten kicked out of college um, to a remote island <laughs> with no pretext? I don't know, it feels kind of weird to me. A couple of other times that stuff like this seems to happen for me is, for example, after the women discover that like Poppy and Tanya are dead. They do like a brief search for like oh flares, let's send up some, some flares and get help. But that's pretty much all they do. I felt personally like in that kind of situation, someone might go to a little bit more trouble to try and get rescued if they believed there was a murderer on the island with them. Like for example, they could have set several fires around the island and tried to send up some smoke so that maybe if anything someone might just think there was a wildfire and come to help. Um, it just felt a little bit weird to me that the like the efforts to find help kind of ended at just oh shoot there are no flares. Another event that confuses me a little bit is when the three women are huddled up in the main house together and Chloe decides that she's gonna go out into the storm. This felt a little bit unrealistic to me especially for her, knowing that there's a murder on the island, having seen Tanya dead and see, having seen all the blood surrounded with Poppy, I just feel like she's painted as an impulsive and kind of reckless character, but I do feel like some sort of self-preservation there would keep someone from going out into a thunderstorm on an island where they believe potentially there could be you know, um, a murderer outside of the group of the three women. All things considered, I did enjoy this book. I thought it was a good thriller with pretty fast pace, and I think it would be perfect if you're looking for something thrilling with a nice summer tropical atmosphere. These are some of the books I plan on reading next, so if you stay tuned, you can check out my upcoming book reviews, and you can add me on Goodreads or follow me on Instagram to see all about what I'm reading. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.